we need at a certain point to work on uh, soft field takeoffs and landings. Okay. Emergency procedures. Uh, um, our emergencies and emergency procedures. Why don't we go up and practice emergencies and emergency procedures on this flight? Okay. They're they're more fun. Okay. Uh, um, uh, so there's a number of ways. The first thing with regarding emergencies is we have to determine that there's an emergency, right? right. And we have to determine the severity of the emergency and what the what the course of action is with that. So first is determining the emergency. So how do we know that there's an emergency? Well, the easiest way is if you have a warning light going off right. uh, or some sort of an enunciator. So uh, if first thing I want to do is talk to you about these warning lights. On the Rotax 914, you're going to have both of these warning lights. On the 912, that you might have the lights, but they'll be disconnected. They won't do anything. Gotcha. So on the 914, this danger warning light means that it's overboosting for some reason. Okay. Or you've been in boost for too long. Gotcha. So you are limited to five minutes in full turbo, okay. continuous. Once you pass five minutes, this will start flashing at you. You need to bring it back. Right. So that's what the turbo means is over, or the red means the danger. It means it's overboosting. So bring the power back a little bit. Is it both going to be just the red or is it going to be both of them? It would be just the red. That's what the red light means is overboost. Overboost, okay. So with, typically what you would want to do is bring the power back. If the red light doesn't go off after you've brought the power back, what I would do is I would start looking for a place to land because it's quite possible you're going to blow out your engine pretty soon. Gotcha. Now, what does that mean to you? Does that mean that, uh, oh, I need to shut off the engine immediately? If you're over the if you're over an airport, right, you might want to think about that. Just turn the engine off, okay, and, uh, um, and get down. If you're five minutes from an airport, you might think about I'm going to fly to the airport. I, I'm not worried about the airplane once it decides that it's going going wrong. I'm worried about you. Yeah. So uh, try to make it to the airport. Blow out the engine. I don't care. Uh, just get back to an airport and be safe. So. The, that's what the TCU light means. Of course, if you're over a grass landing strip or something and you decide, hey, I'm going to fly back to Taylor so that I can land on asphalt, yeah. I, I might be a little upset if you yeah. decide <laughs> I'm just going to continue <laughs> flying and blow out an engine on that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Don't blow out an engine unless you have to. That's 30, uh, what, 36 grand? Uh, 32, yeah, something 32. like that. So, so that's, uh, that's what that means, though, is that you're overboosting. Right. So adjust your throttle. The warning light means that this turbocharger is controlled by a computer. Okay. So this is your computer right here, the turbo control unit. Yes. If if that yellow warning light lights up, that means that one of the sensors that goes into that computer has failed. Gotcha. And so the somehow the turbo is not going to operate properly. So what does that mean? Does that mean that you need to land immediately? Probably not, no. but to, but you need to know that you're, you might not get turbo power, so right. you might be limited down to 80 horsepower, because this is actually an 80 horsepower engine that's boosted. Okay. So you might be limited in that regard. So the turbo is running all the time, it's just it's when it goes into, what, 15 pounds plus to, Correct. to boost, yeah. Yeah, or that 115%. That so basically from 35 inches of manifold pressure to 40 inches of manifold pressure. Okay, gotcha. That's when it, uh, that's when it makes a difference. So. There's uh, um, so if your yellow light lights up, that's what you might want to consider. Uh, is that okay? I probably want to think about a place to land. Maybe adjust your throttle because maybe it could be the throttle position sensor is bad or something. If you adjust the throttle, sometimes that'll that'll make a difference. Mm -hmm. I've actually had that uh, light up on me before because I've had a throttle position sensor go bad. And what happened was uh, at a one at one throttle position, you'd be flying along and it would. Yee! Ooh. So the turbo would would engage, or yeah. or the wastegate would close. Then it would go back. Then it would close and go back. Just adjusting the throttle, adjusted that or changed that for that flight, and then I changed the throttle position sensor, and everything was good. Cool. So, that's so what did you go ones. more or less? Just curious. Um, it really wouldn't matter either way. Yeah. Uh, typically, what I did, I think I went less. Yeah. Uh, I say typically. It was obviously typically and just slowed down. Right. Yeah. Exactly. 
what ends up happening on, on that, I could get into all kinds of details on it, but basically the throttle position sensor is just a rheostat or a potentiometer, gotcha. and you get something on that and it arcs, and so it, if you adjust yeah. the throttle, it'll change that. Yeah. Okay. I've made lots of money overtime-wise from bad potentiometers. <laughs> I hear you. That's <laughs> back, it. Well, back in the days when they were, that's what they always use instead of the sensors. Yeah. And it happens relatively often on these, unfortunately more often than I think they, they should. Yeah. but something to be aware of. Generator aux failure in the 912, that's not that big of a deal because uh, you've still got your uh, electronic ignitions that, that are running independently on the engine. Okay. In this, it's a big deal because your generator is what's charging your battery, right? Gotcha. On the 912, you have a mechanical fuel pump that's boosted by an electrical fuel pump. Right. On this one, we have two electrical fuel pumps. <laughs> so, if your generator fails... Eventually, you, you're going to be out of fuel pump. Correct. Right? You're gonna, when the battery dies, you're out of fuel. So, you want to start shedding electrical load pretty quickly. Just something to, to be aware of. By shedding electrical load, what are you going to do? Shut down your... Radio own. off, transponder off, lights off. Yeah. Uh, um, Anything that you don't need electrically. Right. Yeah, um, even if you wanted to turn your fly dat or your engine monitor off, you could pull the fly dat circuit breaker. I don't think I'd pull any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Unless I knew exactly which one it was. Fair enough. It's just something to, to consider. The accessories breaker, you could pull that, and that yeah. would turn off your rotor tachometer or turn off your fuel gauge. Okay. It would turn off your, uh, um, your DC plugs. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and when you start getting desperate for for time, you might want to consider that. You don't want to pull the battery. <laughs> no, you don't pull the battery brake. Battery so. or the generator. Exactly. Yeah. So, now, well, if the generator started causing, started arcing and smoking, you might want to pull the generator brake. Yeah. So. But you wouldn't know that. Well, if you started getting uh, smoke somehow from uh, over... Uh, uh, could be that you're getting over voltage. Gotcha. You might want to pull the generator. So you mean if, but that smoke, the only way you would know is if you smoke be correct. Yeah. Cooking wires up here. Correct. Because right? behind you, you wouldn't see it. Exactly. Exactly. So. But if you're getting over voltage, it's highly possible. Yeah. The sim for the for the uh, air coop. <laughs> I didn't notice it one day, and then one day I changed the camera angle, flying behind it. It's dumping oil all the time. It's just got a continuous trail of smoke. <laughs> and I'm saying, somebody had a sense of humor when they wrote that one. There you go. Because <laughs> a lot of them do that. Oh, yeah, I know. Believe me, I'm familiar. So, the the generator aux uh, failure, not a big deal in the 912, very big deal in the 914. Gotcha. The fuel light, when that fuel light comes on, you have, uh, according to the book, you have five minutes to land. Five minutes? Five minutes. From okay. the time it's on steady. Okay. The so it'll start flickering as the level gets low. Then. Correct. The reality is you've got closer to 10 minutes, but the book says five. Yep. Okay. Rotor brake means the rotor brake is on. Right. Trim is when you've got the trim all the way forward. Gotcha. So that's, uh, that's just things to, to be aware of there. So that's your enunciator lights. The other things to be aware of that would be a cause for concern. And probably more likely is that you start seeing something low or even in the yellow as we're flying. So the let's say your you know, let's say your oil temperature starts uh, going up into the yellow, getting too warm. Getting too warm, right? Right. So, how does how is the oil cooled in this? Well, you come back here and look, your oil is actually cooled off of a heat exchanger. Okay. So you get the water that flows through your radiator, then that water flows through the, the heat exchanger and cools your oil. Oh, okay. On this one. That's Some of them have a separate oil cooler. Right. But on, on this particular one, it's cooled by a heat exchanger. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, uh, that means that if you start seeing that your oil's uh -huh. warm, then These you're are, probably going to see higher cylinder temperatures too, because it probably you probably have a coolant leak. Yeah. Uh, um, 
So what I would look for is okay if that's if your oil temperature is going up, your cylinder temperatures are going up, then okay you might have a coolant leak and something to think about. You probably need to land pretty quickly. Right. Uh, um, the uh, how could you cool it down? Well, if you're cruising at high speed and high power settings, maybe you bring the power back, try to cruise around 65 miles per hour rather right. than at those higher speeds. Uh, um, so let's say that uh, you have those high temperatures, everything's like that, then uh, you would start bringing the power back would be my first suggestion. Okay. And then if you see that it's continuing to go up, then that's when you start thinking, okay, I need to look for a place to land pretty immediately. Right. Uh, um, you could always, here on the GPS, you could hit press to accept, you could hit nearest in the top right. Nearest airport, oh, nearest airport. Taylor's our nearest airport, it's 0.3 miles away. Right. Uh, because that's where it's going to the yeah. center of the airport. So um, then you could hit Taylor, direct to, activate. And there we go, it'd bring you to Taylor. So if you're really having trouble, you can always use that nearest function. Okay. So, yeah, um, so that's an option. Okay. Um, all of your your readings, your normal engine readings, are printed right here on the panel for you. Right. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you can you can do that right there. Fifty to one ten. Yeah. Long head temperature. Ninety to one ten. Exhaust gas. Is exhaust gas showing in here? EGTs, yep. EGT one, two, three, and oh, four. Oh, gotcha. Got them on all four, go. Cool. Yep. So, all that information is right there. If your oil pressure dropped, that pretty much tells you your engine's going to quit soon. Right. So you better start looking for a place to land directly below you, or very close to below you. Because the engine will seize once that oil pressure's or once the oil's gone. Right. So. So that would be the low. Well, but, well, let me ask you, if your oil, if you're leaking oil and you didn't know it, and all of a sudden you got down low, would it, the oil temp would go up, but the, the pressure would go down, right? Correct. Yep. In fact, the higher the temp goes, the lower the pressure is going to go. Gotcha. Uh, so. The um, that's that. If the other things to think about, if you have to egress this plane while the rotors are turning or while the prop is turning, always get out on the right and forward. Okay. Never go backwards. The rotor is always at a backwards angle, so the rotor is going to be low at the back all the time. The prop will also be going behind you possibly, so. If you have to get out to the right and forward. So why would you ever get out with it running? With the well, not with the engine running necessarily. If you had a runaway somehow with the rotor. Yeah. Yeah, with the rotor turning. I mean, if the thing's on fire. Yeah. yeah you're, you're getting out of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with the and the rotor, like I said, is always going to be spinning lower in the back than it is in the front. So. Pretty bonanza. Yeah. What were you saying? Loud. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's that. Um, what else to go over? Oh, engine fire on the on startup or on the ground. You would turn the fuel pumps off, go wide open on the throttle, continue cranking. Then keys off or fuel pumps off mags off, continue cranking, and then uh, get out. Continue cranking by, you mean? Because you're trying to get the fuel out of the... Uh, uh, right, but I'm saying, you're saying fuel pumps off, I understand. You want to yep. cut the supply of fuel. But you're leaving the switch on or you're turning you're turning the switch off? Turning the switch off. Go okay. off, open the throttle up so that it'll burn off the fuel in the lines. Okay. And then hop out. But you're saying continue cranking. You're not talking about you run the starter, are you? Yeah, yeah, run the starter. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So now that, on the that, 912, it would be a little bit different because uh, you've got a mechanical fuel pump. You can't turn the. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to starve the fuel supply, basically. Right. So with the fuel pumps off, you don't have any fuel being supplied to it. By continuing to crank it, it's pulling that fuel into the engine. Right. And opening the throttle wide open is uh, pulling the fuel out. Yeah. So that's if it if it goes on, on startup. But the minute you throw that key switched off, theoretically, it's going to stop. You're just going to be cranking manually. Correct. Gotcha. Yep. Exactly. Uh, um, if the engine started, if the engine is started, you could turn both fuel pumps off, go wide open on the throttle, and it should burn off the, the fuel in there. Say that again, though? If the engine has started, okay, you should be able to turn the fuel pumps off, go wide open on the throttle, and that should burn off the fuel in the, in the engine. Right. So, the 912 is slightly different because you have a mechanical pump. Right. And then, uh, um, get out and dress the plane, obviously. If you have an engine fire in flight, you want to shut everything down, turn the engine off, uh, and uh, land as quickly as possible. So go from right to left, fuel pump, fuel pump, keys, and then you can turn the master off and get out, or land as quickly as possible and get out of the plane. Okay. The, um, the, what am I thinking? Smoke. If smoke comes from behind the cockpit, start shedding electrical load. Off, 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 off. I mean, try to figure out what's smoking. It could be right. the, the engine instrument. Boom, there we go. We pulled the flight at. That's for the engine instrument. It could be the accessories. Boom, accessories. We turned the rotor, rotor tech, we turned the fuel off, our fuel gauge off, we turned everything off there, or all the accessories. Could be your generator, pull that. If it's the turbo or any of the wiring in the turbo, you could pull the turbo wire or turbo breaker right there. Hmm. So all that really do would just kill your turbo. Correct. Well, it would stop the turbo wherever it's at, or the wastegate wherever it's at. Ah. So if you did that from the time uh, it starts up. When the engine's at idle, right. the wastegate's actually all the way closed. So it's okay. all the way it's spinning the turbo as much as possible. Right. Then when you open it up, it start, It opens the, the wastegate until you come up to full power, then it closes it again, and then it completely closes. So if you actually pulled the engine turbo when it's back here at idle, then you would overboost the engine as you start going to full power. Okay. So you don't want to, you definitely don't want to do that. There he goes again. That was a fast loop. Yeah, no kidding. That's a fast airplane. Yeah. All right. So uh, um, what we'll do is we'll go up and we'll just, uh, we'll figure out uh, or do some simulated approaches, simulated uh, emergencies. So if we truly do have an emergency, we got to think about the places we're going to land. Okay. <clears throat> There's a term called WATO that I like to tell people. W-A-T-O. Stands for wind, airspeed, terrain, and obstacles. Wind. We always want to land into the wind if we can. Get right. the slowest ground speed when we set down. Airspeed. We need to have roughly 65 miles per hour. Yeah. If you want to just plant it somewhere because you don't have a real large area, right? obviously you could land it slower than that and you could plant the, the plane down. So, something to think about. Terrain. Look for good terrain. What is the best terrain? Number one is going to be an airport. Right. Two will be a nice, mowed, smooth field. Three, now you start getting into more of a plowed uh, field for uh, or where a plowed... Uh, Agriculture field. Right. Four, now you're starting to think of maybe a road. Uh, um, five would be uh, a, uh, um, or now you're starting, starting to get even worse, maybe into a field that's not plowed or that has some debris in it. Mm -hmm. Now you start, then you start thinking about trees uh, or water. Uh, um, I would much rather go in water than I would trees. Yes. Because a tree you're going to fall from. Right. Water, you're going to sink the plane. Now, in an airplane, it's different because you have to land with forward speed. If right. I was landing this in the water, I would just drop it into the water. Right. And roll it to the right. Roll it to the right. Yeah. It's because the way the rotors are turning, 
Right. They would, they would hit the ground behind you rather than in front of you. Gotcha. So, uh, um, so yeah, that's... Roll to right, pull your seatbelt, and swim like hell. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, in fact, I'd probably pull my seatbelt before... Well, it's questionable whether you're not pull it before you sit down. Yeah. Because uh, if it knocks you unconscious... You're going down with the plane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, at least you have a fighting chance. But then there's also the possibility that when you hit down, if your seatbelt's undone... You get thrown into the Yeah, exactly. So, all things to just think about. Yep. Um, So, roads, when you look at roads, the the problem I find, you know, when I I simulate them hitting on a road is that even though you might not have a power line where you picked, yeah. There's one coming soon, Absolutely. Cause it seems, because the power lines always usually follow the road. They do, yeah. So, so and that was that's the O of Waito, is obstacles. Right. So, power lines, uh, fences, anything like that. Right. So, W-A-T-O, wind, airspeed, terrain, obstacles. It's important to always know where the wind's coming from. Right. Today is relatively calm. Yeah, but it's, it's coming from 220 at least. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's somewhat south, southwest. Yeah, we'll so, wait for the next couple of days. Yeah. yeah. So wind, airspeed, terrain, obstacles. That's the that's the key. So yeah. we'll uh, go up and we'll... It totally amazes me that people like that guy that just landed that on the 101 down there. Two of them. Well, one of them was, was the fighter plane. Yeah. And he piled it in his medium. But the other guy, I think, was in a... I want to say it was a 172. And they came down and just happened. They were a three-lane freeway, 101, and they just... Came down and took the two outside lanes. I mean, it was like no big deal. They just <laughs> sat down and everybody kind of there was taxied a video. around him. Yeah. yeah, there was a video of a guy giving him a thumbs up from, from yeah. Size. yeah. He taxied to the next exit and pulled off. Yep, I saw that. <laughs> that was cool. I'm saying that was you know a one in a hundred chance. Exactly. Because my fear always is if you're going to go down with the car, the car doesn't know you're there. So right, you know. And when you get down to that last minute, if he's underneath you, you're going to do, you're going to plant him on top. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's about timing. Yeah. I've always heard, uh, I've, I've been told land with traffic. I've been told by other people land against traffic because traffic landing against you is going to see you going against them. But um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to go head to head with the car. No. But that, that does lead me to one other thing. There's a, there is an emergency frequency that you can call. 122 zero, zero, zero. 121.5. 121.5 is the emergency frequency. Does your radio have a way? To, it doesn't have a way to get right to there, does it? Not direct to it. You'd have to tune it. Yeah. Uh, um, do you Both know what my... you say if you have a if you have a emergency, uh, a true emergency where you need to get priority and your. Well, I think probably what you do first is identify yourself, then tell them you have an emergency, the nature of the emergency, and probably where you're at. You're getting way too in depth for it. Okay. Initially, it's mayday, mayday, mayday. Okay. That that tells everyone it doesn't matter what frequency you're on. If you say mayday, 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 other people are gonna know that you're in an emergency. Okay. So mayday, 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 experimental gyro, or, or at that point you could just say gyro five uh, Romeo Delta uh, is engine failure over Elgin, uh, and at least somebody might hear you and get some. You might get some help. Yeah. Uh, um, that's declaring an emergency is when you call mayday, mayday, mayday. Don't worry about declaring an emergency. It's perfectly okay to do. You know, don't let it freak you out that, oh, my God, I'm, I'm declaring it. That's okay. You're that's declaring it. It's not really truly going to be an emergency, but you don't know that at the time. Right, exactly. There's The reality is when you declare an emergency, there's there might be a little bit of paperwork for you to do. It's probably not going to be much. Yeah. So, uh, um, so that's the thing to do. You can tune on your transponder to 7700 zero, zero. Mm-hmm. and the way you can remember that if 7500 means you've been hijacked right 75 taken alive 76 radio glitch so you have a radio problem 77 going to heaven so 75 <laughs> taken alive 76 radio glitch 77 going to heaven so those are all things you can do typically in the gyro we're flying so low you don't have time to worry about that stuff. Yeah. You're just looking for a place to land and going and setting it down. You can also try to restart if your engine failed. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so that's one possibility as well. 
if you had to restart in this. Make sure your fuel pumps are on, make sure your mags are on both. Hit the starter, maybe adjust the throttle. Hmm. And that's, that's a possibility also. I think most of your experience would be though that once the engine quit, it quit. <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. But it's still a possibility. To... Still a possibility was a fluke, yeah. Exactly. So, okay. So we'll go up and we'll just practice fl flying around for a little bit and we'll uh, simulate a couple emergencies and go from there. Okay. All right, cool. This is usually a pretty fun flight. Okay. Or a pretty fun lesson, I should say. Okay, okay. Seat belts on. On in the back. Helmet secure. Good Cycle back. forward and latch. Go altimeter. I'm going to set it. 550. Uh, master switch on. Strobes on. Choke on a call. We don't need it. Boost pump. Use the boat. Clear. Taking off to the north. I don't know. He is going the wrong way. Up. Okay, let's see the wind socks. Yep. Yep, absolutely.
it's just a beautiful day out here today. Say that again. Saying one seven now. Yeah, I think I saw him turn out. It looked like he was turning out to. Yeah, there he goes. Now he's entering the right downwind for one seven. suit today. Almost. You can always undo the zipper though, that's the good part. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to go right here and turn yeah, around into the wind. Thing goes on in right, sounds good. Yeah, I was going to go right and turn into the wind. Get the rotor blade 
heads up a little bit more. You can come back with the cyclic. But it's not whistling quite as much now. Yeah. Let's go. Air traffic, I'll come right down west for 175. It's kind of crazy here. Settle down on that movement. There you go. What you make happy way? You might cut out that 17 miles to the northwest of Atlanta. Remember, you'll need a little right pedal as you. 
you had that power for that go around. Okay, so we would have been pretty long on that one. Yeah. And you were saying that it's in the first spot we were we were in a, uh, a pretty precarious spot because we were going to be too long. Uh, or you said we wouldn't make that. We're too close to it, right? Well, we could have uh, run into a slope line and come back around. Exactly. That's one way of one exactly. way of doing it. But you just blew out your engine on takeoff mode because of low oil pressure. Simulated. Where are we going to go? about straight ahead. Okay, where? Right here. In these trees? No. Oh, well, that's got to be close. Okay. So what are you going to do? You're dedicated to it now. Uh, you, you would make it. Let's go around. Let's make a... Actually, I've got the controls. You have the controls. I've got the controls. this before we got too close. Yeah. All right, so always have a place in mind, if you can, to where you would land in the case of an engine failure. Right now, I'd land directly below us. Like simulated engine failure, just place directly below us. I would turn, I would drop the nose. Here's where you put everything together for what we've been working on. And you'd come down, let's see, we got power lines, but I could come down to hit this spot right here on my left. To our left, so I can come down and hit that spot right there. I'm not going to. Yeah. They look at it. They look at it. Right down. You're not going to find that right here. No, I'll tell you here. This is where getting very precise with your landings really matters. Yeah. Look to your right right now. Right over there in that green. Yeah. See that smooth grass there? That's where we would go. Right under us on the right. All right there. That area oh, right there, yeah. yep. So now if we lost our engine, I'd probably go with, uh, probably straight down on this, this little piece of property right here. Yeah. Okay, you got the controls? You got the controls, and now you just lost your engine again. Where are you going to go? Where are you going? Alright, right here. Okay. Now the TCU light came off. So that's, 
that's what you would want to do if the TCU light came on. It's that simple. Now this is simulated, but you've got a yellow fuel light on. It just came on. Yellow fuel light. I'm yep. going to look for a place to land. Okay, how long do you have to land? Uh, this five. Probably closer to ten. Okay, but uh, don't don't say probably closer to ten. It's five. five. That's it. That's the what the book says. That's what I want to keep it at. So where are we gonna go? Right okay, there. go on ahead and do it. Make it happen. Do we need to set down right this second? No, we don't. Okay, so we got if the fuel light just came on. That means we've got five minutes, like we said. But do we want to get out of range? So if we do starve it fuel, I'm going to take the power to idle for fire. There you go, start to turn in towards the runway. Because what you don't want to do is get without or get out of power off glide range from, from your runway. And now, slow it down just a little bit. Slow it down. Slow it down even more. Maybe down to 40 miles an hour or so. There you go. Now notice we're bleeding off our altitude. We're letting it come down. We're right at 500 feet, so maybe just add a little bit of the uh, airspeed. There you go. And a little bit more to get it down to 65. There you go. And just hold the center line. There you go. Don't hit these, don't hit these cones. Gotta set down on those uh, two mains first. All right, let's go. Work up forward. There, there you go. Forward, air more. Keep coming forward. Keep coming forward. Keep us low until we get 65. There, 65. Now we fly away. Cross the airport at. 
that nose, drop that nose, drop the nose. There you go, get 65. Notice you need a little left pedal when, when the engine comes in. down. There you go, and start turning even more. There you go. balancing the nose even after you land. All right, let's go. that left pedal. We were we we're starting to push that left pedal for some reason. We were already pointed slightly left. Uh, All right, I want to demonstrate something. I've got the controls. I've got the controls. So we're going full power. I've got the stick all the way back, using the pedals to keep me pointed straight. The nose is coming up, using that right pedal. Just holding the nose low to the runway here. Keeping it low, keeping it low. There's 65, flying away. Down. It can get squirrely if you put the nose back down. All right. 
And you also want to use the, the uh, rotor to slow you down, to act as an air brake. Right. All right, let's go. Left side click is wrong. There you go. Keep that nose low. Keep that nose low. There you go. It's okay if you're going to be long on the landing. I'm not that worried about that. But I I am worried about, obviously, busting the plane if, uh, if something, right. something happens. So, all right, let's go. Whoa, 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 all right. 
Alright, we tried to go way too aggressively back with the cyclic on that when, okay. when the nose hit down. If we're holding the nose up, just continue holding the nose up, and then as it tries to settle, just come back with the cyclic. It's just a smooth transition back. Okay. Alright, let's do one more. We set it down safely, so all's good. Stick all the way back. Let's go again. Thank you. 
Really good job with them. That's what I tell people all the time. I think when it comes to safety and reliability, Magni just can't be beat. It's best to keep your one hand on the cyclic. I know the sun might be kind of in your eyes, uh, but you feel that bumping right there? No. That's a uh, that's blade flap. So that's uh, that's why it's important to keep your hand on the cyclic and also to slow the to slow the aircraft down. The other traffic up to two at one seven Fox. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, the VOR approach. Uh, Call you guys up now. I usually try to pinch it with my thighs. I was doing that, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, that works. And Taylor traffic, uh, Skyline 2817 Fox, we're going to hold here momentarily uh, at uh, SF and then we'll bring it around the corner here for a DOR DME 17 approach. Full stop, Taylor. Yes. 